Welcome to chapter eight of services marketing. We've passed the halfway mark in the book. Things are well underway. And we're now going to hit one of the fun bits. Now, look, overall, I really like services marketing. I enjoy teaching it, I enjoy researching it, and I enjoy studying it. And IMC, the Integrated Services Marketing Communications, is one of the areas where you get to do some really interesting things and to do a lot of thinking. And good thinking, creative thinking. Because what you're trying to do in Integrated Marketing Communications is you're trying to explain the invisible, intangible, personally experienced benefits of a service to a customer who may or may not have experienced that service, whose experience that service may or may not reflect your uh, explanation, and who will judge the quality of that service in part based on how you've explained it to them in your IMC. So, first and foremost, it's integrated marketing communications. It's plural. It's more than advertising. IMC is the protocol under which we have a single central message that we are trying to communicate. It is the sum of the brand, the user experience, the intentional and deliberate communication, and the way in which we have positioned ourselves and the way that the customer interprets and communicates. So we've got the external message that we control, We've got the points of contact, which is the service experience. And then we've got the positioning strategies. So the way in which the customer thinks about us. And these are the facets that work together to create an IMC communications platform. You will use multiple tools, you'll use multiple techniques. But overall, the plan is it's all consistent and it's all thematically linked which means you're going to need to do a fair bit of planning and you're also going to need to ensure that your IMC is internally consistent and explained to staff of the organization why they need to communicate a particular message as much as how they need to communicate that message. So let's talk about the communication. What do we do? What's its role? Top of the charts, positioning. Cannot begin to emphasize just how important communications and IMC is in your market positioning. But also a central part of this is the distribution of the idea of what is it that the service does and how is the service produced. Positioning says who are we most like. Differentiation says how are we distinct. We also have a couple of uh, roles and training elements here. So when we talk about this, we also have the role of why do we have this? We have it so we can make the backstage of the service visible and understandable. Now, sometimes we'll do this for comedic effect. You'll have the, so how does the service work? And they'll roll back, they will sometimes literally roll back a curtain and show you some highly stylized, clearly doesn't work in reality way, as part of the communication of the overall brand. The brand's got a sense of humor, the brand makes jokes about its backstage performance. Or with the IMC, we can make the backstage, how the staff, the people who are behind the organization become a feature point. We can also use IMC to teach the customer how to perform in the service. And this is where one of the most important facets of marketing communication comes through. Under an integrated marketing communication policy, and it is a policy, it's a set of processes and it's behavior, customer co-production is vital because the customer, the customer is a partial employee of the firm. So the customer themselves, as well as experiencing the service, becomes part of the embodied 
message of the service. And this is why segmentation is so important and why targeting positioning is critical. The people who use your service are the ambassadors, the brand ambassadors of your service. They will be viewed by other customers in terms of, is this person someone who I wish to share a service environment with? Is this person like me and similar to me? Therefore, I feel, hey, this service must be for me. How is this customer behaving? How then should I behave? Can I mimic the behaviors that they are undertaking? And as a customer, can I actually train other customers? Now, one of the elements this comes into play is that if you think about going to a sporting event, in my case, it's professional wrestling, but for you, it could be the AFL, the NRL, rugby league, netball, volleyball, swimming, golf. Golf, everyone, dead silent, most of the golfer does their thing, politely applauds afterwards. Wrestling, everyone's noisy as all get up whilst the wrestlers are doing their thing. In fact, silence is usually a bad thing. So if you've got a golf style crowd sitting there very quietly, well, yes, very, very skilled, yes, bravo. It's a disaster. So you have people spiked in the crowd whose job it is is to be the role models to demonstrate the appropriate behavior. But you as a customer also then get to co-create and co-produce and co-create the training. You can teach other customers. Given that at the football, and particularly if you look at British soccer, soccer fans sing. There are songs that are modified to contextualize players, events. Somebody had to write that. Somebody else produced it, as in taught the others to sing it. More people learnt the words, and then it became a customer co-produced event. Everyone sings along, and suddenly you've got an event that's co-produced that's consistent with the brand. Or that the brand can build on and say, and exhibit similar characteristics and traits. So IMC has got a really strong role in working with your customers, treating customers as the embodiment of the brand, treating them as role models for new customers and other customers. So we're gonna link back to IMC when we start talking about customer roles and customer elements later in a couple of the chapters. So, knowing that the role of the IMC is to educate customers, and that's a feature, it's also the challenge. Now, as with most things in marketing, when you see the word challenge, you know that in your head, the words challenge accepted just lit up with the appropriate graphic. But also, you wanna be looking at this guy, okay, this is a thing we need to do. These are communication challenges. How do we make this useful? How do we approach this to say, all right, the problem with services marketing is that we need to manage promises. How do we turn that into a feature? How do we turn that into a, the promise management into an important part of our service? So you want to always take these on as design challenges and say, how do we build that in? So your four tasks, educate the customer. We've talked a bit about that. Educate the employee. Ensure that the brand you are presenting suits the people you have on team. And we're going to talk about role stress and role ambiguity a little bit later. But internal communication. Ensure that when you're putting out a brand message, the customers are not the first people to see it. The staff know what the brand is, know what the slogan is, and know why they're being asked to perform these particular IMC activities and that the staff feel that this IMC activity is consistent with the activities of the organization. You also have a task in services IMC of trying to explain the service, which is intangible, and to lower the perceived risk around the intangibility. So you're trying to create virtual tangibility, getting people to be able to, say, take a credence product or an experience product and go, I haven't experienced it, but I can imagine it.
and the imagination becomes a level of virtual tangibility. Of course, that said, we still deal with the intangible. How do you sell fitness as a concept? How do you sell the ability to walk up a flight of stairs feeling good about yourself? So we need to work out how do we deal with the abstract? We get into some really interesting stuff shortly on this, but basically you've got four factors you've got to worry about. Services can be quite generalized. A chair, a table, and some cutlery can indicate a restaurant. In fact, the logo for, look, roadside cafe is fork, knife, plate. So there's a certain level of generality. When you're trying to talk about experiences like the happiest place, a wonderful time, pleasurable, not distasteful to the senses. It's very abstract. So again, that's going to attract certain types of audiences. But the more search characteristics you have, the easier it is, but also the lower level of intangibility you're dealing with. Same way, the more of this, the more you're trying to promote a credence product, the less searchable it is, the less traits and characteristics you have to work with in your communications. And occasionally it's straight up, if you haven't experienced it, if you've ever had that situation where you've, had to, you've turned around to someone and gone, yeah, you had to be there. You can't do that if that's your on your IMC. You can't look at the customer and go, yeah, well, you wouldn't understand until you tried it. Not unless that's your product position of generic service. We can't explain it, so we're going to ask you to try it. Not a great position. Not, 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 not what you necessarily want to do, but you've got these as options. And tangibility creates a couple of problems. To try and tackle those problems, we start talking about, again, a counter. Here's a problem. How do we fix that problem? Or how do we capitalize on that problem? So we've got, it's abstract. It's difficult for people to conceptualize. You strap on the GoPro and you have someone walk through the service. You have someone talk out their, th their thinking, their feeling. You set up a reality TV show. I mean, most of us knew absolutely nothing about restaurants. Then Gordon Ramsay's TV series showed up. We still know nothing about restaurants, but doesn't backstage look so dramatic in Hell's Kitchen? Fires, knives, a cranky British bloke shouting loudly and swearing a lot. Doesn't it suddenly put some tangibility on it? So again, you can do this, you can embed, you can, if you've got a really complicated service that's difficult to explain, but you have the opportunity to use it for product placement, get the to the most popular TV series you can get your hands on and offer your service so that the characters can interact in that environment so that you have it as the backdrop. Sure, you, it's probably not great to use, uh, say, CSI or uh, Law and Order, but Neighbours is still running, right? Soap operas, reality TV shows, do whatever it takes to put demonstrations of your service experience in a context people can see it alongside, not necessarily as the advert, but just present in the process. And that will help you with issues of abstractness, of non-searchability, of generality. Defeating the intangibility, as always, if there's, a, if there's a feature, we can turn it into a bug. If there's a bug, we can try and make it a feature. That said, I'm going to say here and now, the bit where the book says, use metaphors. Be careful, all right? Metaphorical experiences is where it gets to get weird really quick. But there are two other approaches. One is to make it tangible. One is to bring physicality to the fore. Make it visible. The second one is to talk about the provider. Don't talk about the service. Talk about the person who delivers the service. The NRMA has been doing that a bit. They 
banks are doing this, where they show you a staff member and talk about the staff member story. And the number of times the staff member is standing there the whole, this is my story. We know then we've got templates and cliches, but seriously, actually use your own staff. And when you sign them up and get them to be a part of your IMC, contract them for a longer period. Don't have the don't leave open the opportunity for your physical embodiment of your service, your personal embodiment of your service, to be hired by your rival. But again, think about it. Services, people are the embodiment of the service, people are the embodiment of the brand. Therefore, putting a person up front means that people can see a person, interconnect with that person, form that relationship mental connection with the person and there you've got your per they've got your way of defeating the intangibility by not focusing on it. So there's a couple of things in terms of managing perception and expectation. Uh, look we just promised we just said we could use metaphors. Flag it clearly when it's the hyperbole and over the top and quite obviously comedic so that people don't actually have an expectation that could be deemed reasonable in a court of law and Trade Practices Act. In terms of management, management of promise and control, a lot of this is around the product. But a key thing is don't over promise when you know you're going to under deliver. Or if you must over promise, have a very clear structured sequence of tiers of different value offers that you communicate and make it clear if it's ludicrous o'clock on the luxury that that's at a price that no one's going to want to pay and that there are steps beneath it so you can access what's realistically available. But you'll notice here again the tiered value offer it showed up in pricing, it showed up in product, it's here now in communication. You can show people that there is a base service and a nicer one. We can show them that there is a luxury service and they can still get some of those benefits at the basic price. Near the last core important content block is we talked about educating the customer. Here are some protocols. Show them. Show them the service. A personal trainer asked me for advice on how to sell their brand, how to sell their service. I said, well, get a mate, stick a GoPro on your mate, stick it on the chest, run them through a personal training session, put that up on YouTube, have the point of view camera world, have someone experience the service through the eyes of the camera. Show and necessarily tell, explain. YouTube is a godsend for this. You've got an almost unlimited space, but you've got masses of space to push up detail. You can show people the service experience. You can show them what to expect. Heck, you can probably even offer a virtual version of it for uh, slightly more. But also showing them then means that you're training them. You're getting them to get their expectations. And you can say, look, you've seen it, now experience it. You've had the cognitive, now get the emotive. So you can show use behaviors, you can show queuing patterns, you can do briefing videos. One of the uh, service entertainment services I used would run a five minute, welcome, this is what you're going to experience today. The, actually it's one of the things that uh, when you go to a live TV, they're having a stand up, having the audience briefing moment of where they explain to you what to expect. Also, in terms of educating the customer, you can use your communications to tell them when it's going to be busy and when it's going to be downtime and the what are the valuable parts of going to the downtime. So, I'm going to push you back to the chapter for the IMC planning because, again, that's a practicality issue of how do I want to use this? Lots of questions to, for you to ask yourself and to answer. Lots of use fit in terms of looking at case studies. But I also want to mention the 5W model because it is important. Because see the keys coming back. Who is the audience? And this is, again, 
cannot stress enough. Segmentation, target, positioning. Audiences are singular. Who is the target audience for this message? What do we need to communicate to that audience? How should we communicate that? What is the platform? What's the framework? What's the protocol? What's the message structure? Where should we communicate that? Where is the audience to be found? How do we get the message to them? When do we need to talk to them? Do we tell them about the service before? Or is our communication about resolving cognitive dissonance so we tell them about the service after they've used it? Do we communicate to them during the service? And why is how in a 5W model? It always bothers me when they get away with that because I've never in my professional marketing career been able to get away with producing a five letter model where four of the letters are the same as a different one. I've always been pulled up by my editor. So I don't know how they got away with the 5W on that front. So last thing I mentioned to you is this is a, the source of messages. Two things I want you to think about. Number one is this course, this subject, the assessment tasks, where have you been hearing the messages about this assessment task from? What's your controlled message and your uncontrolled message been like? And then the second aspect is on a service. When you're going and using a service, this is another one of those, we're out in the wild, we're in the real world. How is this service communicating with me? How am I getting a message about the service? And what messages am I getting about the service through the way it's produced, the way it's delivered, the way it communicates? What advertising have I seen for the service? How is that advertising telling me what to expect or how to behave? And then what have I heard about it from third party sources, from word of mouth, from online? You know, technically, Instagram can be from the service provider, but did I check in to, uh, you know, do I use my phone to check in on Facebook or on um, Yelp or Foursquare or one other service? Did I look at other reviews? What did I learn? What IMC? And how well was that message that I got from the word of mouth or the online social networks of other users consistent with the message I felt that the organization was trying to present? So, IMC, a lot of it in the chapter for you to look at. A lot of drawing on existing knowledge from either introduction to marketing or from the advertising course that we offer here. As always, here's your connection protocols. You'll note there's been a hashtag sitting up here for the entire semester. And what was one of the things I asked you to look at this chapter? I asked you to look at Twitter. The hashtag and the Twitter platform, the social media platforms, these are important real-time ways for people to communicate about their service marketing experience that may or may not be consistent to the brand message that is trying to be presented by the organization. So it's always useful to, uh, social media monitoring is a thing from market research points of view, but also it's why I'm asking you to be conversant with technologies, is that you need this as a trade skill as a services marketer. How do people express themselves within a service? How are they co-producing it? By using social media to augment their service experience. And yes, the selfie is an augmentation of the service experience, because it's tangibilizing and our selfie taken in a service shared with others is the tangibilization of the service and creating a search capacity and a word of mouth endorsement. So it's quite important that you understand how these platforms work and how they fit into your theoretical frameworks and your practical applications.